And we're live in five, four, three, two, one. This is Field Trip to Uranus, better known by we who are as a new, the guide, the most high. Be sure you hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. If you want more of these uh, classes, sorry for the wait. Let's rock and roll, baby. In the famous words of Saeed Baba, let's dance. Uranus is the seventh planet in our solar system, being 1.7 billion miles from the sun. Uranus, also known by we who are as a new, is the fourth largest planet in your solar system. The creation of Uranus take place 45 billion years ago as a part of a competition for the most high. This planet was designed with mathematical inclined skills by he who is known as a new, or Amen. Uranus Uranus is the twin planet to Neptune, as Venus is to Earth. Uranus, which the Greeks called it, named it after the Greek god of the sky. The diameter of Uranus is 31,518 miles. The circumference of Uranus is 99,786 miles. Uranus is quite remarkable, because when Anu created this planet, he made it to lay on its side at 98 degrees, directing its energy towards the sun, keeping all the planet in line as a guide. Uranus is a guide and the magnetic energy that's coming from the top locks the planet, right? About to get into it. We told you that the outside planets rotate faster because they are vibrating on a higher dimension and Uranus is the third to ninth dimensional planet. One day on Uranus is 17 years and one year, one day on Uranus is 17 Earth hours and one year on Uranus is 84 Earth years. So a Uranian are the beings who live on Uranus will be one years old while you're 84 years old. And most of you pass away by 84, so they'll just be one years old and you already passed away. You live and pass away, brother. So understand the time frames here. If you don't understand the time frames, go back and get those other tapes. Go back and get that part one, part two, right? Go get the galactic intro. Get those classes so you can get up to speed and understand how this works here. The time frame is dealing around the distance of your planet from the sun and of the rotation of your planet. So keep that in mind. This is practically this is practically one of the planets that NASA have no information about. They just call it a gas ball like the rest of the other planets that we talked about. And they make claims to it not being habitable. Shows that they're still baby and trying out a scrut. Uranus atmosphere is made up of mostly hydrogen. This type of information and technology is out of their lead. Uranus come equipped with 27 moons. Some of these being baby planets and some of them being warship that will get on your ass you come over there playing around on uranium now you already tried to send some of your probes over there and we disintegrated so stop playing with us uranius has 13 moons has 13 rings around it that acts as a stargate right each of the 13 rings having its own symbol they can be spin and moved around to dial to another galaxy. Overstand what a Stargate is, right? A Stargate is advanced technology that we created millions of years ago. Used like a telephone system that once you dial a certain address to another Stargate, they connect via a wormhole and you're able to walk from one Stargate to the other Stargate. Your government has discovered some of this technology and are now using the Stargate technology to access some of our ancient ships in ancient places. The Stargate that you see in the movie is the old shit. It's millions of years old. We were on a mission on a great newly fresh built mothership, Nubaru. Overstand that there's more than one Nubaru. We have fleets of these, 12 different fleets, okay? So this is one of the new ones designed in the fleet and overstand how Nubaru systems work. As it travels, it pre-scans ahead of solar systems that is entering in order for autopilot work properly. The infrared system scans the solar systems scans the planets, the sun, so that we're able to have a, a proper orbit through the solar system, in and out, right? But on this one particular time, 24 billion years ago, right? 21 billion years after the planet was designed, uranium, right? We traveled to your solar system to find gold, right? And other minerals that will be useful for repairing our planet, Riz, which had been attacked by the Dragon beings from the Dragon star system, who are under the command of Mother Hoover. So, as we 
into your solar system, getting ready to pass by Neptune. Uranus come from behind Neptune. Overstand it, half of Uranus is hidden because half of it is inside of a stargate. And the half that is hidden is inside of the stargate. It's located inside of Cyrus, your capital, right? Your main capital. So half of Uranus is hidden into a stargate, which is located in Cyrus, right? So our radar doesn't pick it up. As we come into your solar system, Uranus come from behind Neptune. We almost crash into Uranus. We almost crash into Titan, which is a planet located, which is a baby moon or planet of Saturn. So in efforts not to crash into Uranus and Titan, right? We kissed off the planet Titan, pulling back, causing a magnetic storm on Neptune, wiping out two thirds of the population. As we swung around, right? We hit, we hit it head on with Meldek, with a planet called Meldek. Because if you look between Mars and Jupiter, there's a big space there where there was once was a planet called Meldek or Vulcan. Meldek being 27,500 miles in diameter. That's about four times the size of Earth, right? It was made mostly of water, had a population of one billion, right? And it had two baby planets, right? Right? And there were beings who lived there underwater and on surface. Reptilians, right? Dragon, right? There were three to four different races there. You had the male Deccans, right? Which were the seven foot tall beings, right? The master splinters, right? These beings were in charge of the planet male deck, right? Then you had the little beings, right? The Tridacians or the Tridacodite who lived underground or underwater, right? And these beings were aggressive while there are other their leaders, the Meldekians, were neutral beings to uh, non-neutral, to non-aggressive beings, right? As we went head on, crashed into Meldek, blowing them up, knocking them out of, the, out of their orbit, beings who lived underwater, who survived the crash, who were the fighters of the aggressive beings, right? called ninja, right? As in Ninja Turtle. These beings launched off four flighter ships, right? To attack Nubaru because they thought that we were attacking them. These four fighter ships under the command of the ninja, or the real niggas, right? The niggas, the real niggas, right? Or ninja, as in Ninja Turtle. And little do you know what the Ninja Turtles is all about? Because these are reptilian beings who are ninjas, who are warriors. Right? Who carry a wear a shed, right? They're reptilians who come from under the water because turtles live in water. Think over this. And they have the nerve to name these beings Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello. These are angelical names, meaning these are intelligent reptilians who live underwater who came from above. Keep that in mind. And these beings love pizza. Telling you the Greeks had a hand in on this, right? So these ninjas launched our four fighter ships. On Nubaru, we have weapons to neutralize or we have weapons to eliminate. We have weapons to wipe your ass out if we want, right? But in this particular case, the four fighter ships, we use the neutralized weapons, which is dealing around the EMP style technology, and we disabled their ship. And they were caught in limbo, trapped in Nubaru's force field. And as we come around on our orbit, wobbling now, one, the, the three of the ship crashed down into Tiamat. One splitting in half, one going straight down the middle, right? And one, one crashing down into the Atlantic Ocean off the Gulf Coast of what you call today Florida. And this event takes place 24 billion years ago, Friday at one o'clock, okay? Your time, okay? You follow me? And watch this, we who are Figured it to be our fault. So we launched off three fighter ships to go back to Red to let them know that we, an accident had taken place and that we might be under attack, right? And seven of our fleet of ships stayed with us. So what we do then is we wanted to repair Tiamat because what we had done, Tiamat was not supposed to not, that was not supposed to happen to Tiamat. Right? We then launched off four more ships to create a tetrahedral energy around Tiamat to reform it again, right? And to replenish it again. But the other suckers, such as Meldak, right? Such as Neptune, right? These jokers, we already had some against. So it's like they had it coming almost, right? In the same case with the, the Nomos, those who claim to know the most from Cyrus B, okay? This is how the crash took place. Right? Beings who live on Uranian 
millions of years prior to this who later migrated to Rig were called the Nid. Right? The beans who occupy Uranians today are called the Blue Uranians, the beans that are in charge, and their leader name is Nova, right? Or uh, Tani, Tuni, or uh, Tuni, right? And she's a blue bean about nine foot tall that can vibrate in between the fourth and ninth density, right? And she she's in charge and her family helps her run Uranian, right? She have two sons and two daughters and her husband, they help her run Uranian, right? And she's in charge of the overseeing the Stargate to see to it that other beings who are not welcome do not enter, right? And she signed things into law in your solar system. She has one of the highest rank from a new in this galaxy, uh, in this star system. Being the first feminine or woman energy commissioned to this solar system. Okay? So we're showing you pictures of them now and what they look like. They are telepathic. They speak a language of symbols, telepathically symbols, where they send a symbol to your, your mind. And if uh, you, could, you should be able to translate that symbol into a whole paragraph of what they're saying, right? These are beings who vibrate on a higher dimension. And they are in charge of the conscious, uh, the consciousness being transferred and cleaned and washed, and either put back into this school or even graduate. When you graduate, even put it to the next school, transfer you to the next school. These beings are in charge of that, right? And these beings do not mess around. They are not emotional, right? These beings are neutral beings. And they work on behalf of a new by way of Mikael, who is better known by we who are as Yanu. Each of these beings carry an orb with them, or uh, a particular type of instrument, a shape. Uh, Nova carries a spear. The uh, the children, some of them carry triangles, and some of them carry squares. I guess this is based on the rank. But with these instruments, their power lies within and they can do different things based on their rank and the shapes and symbols that they have and which color that is glowing, okay? Nova has the power to open up portholes in every dimension all the way up into the ninth dimension, all the way up into the eighth. And these people are very powerful and very instrumental in keeping order in the galactics on this side of the galaxy. There are several other races who are assisting the Blue Radians in uh, keeping and containing this solar system and keeping this school, uh, as far as the military part of things, protected. They're getting assistance from the Aquarians, right? And the Aquarians are a species of hand-sized humanoids with green, greenish, white skin, a large head, large blue eyes, and a very long, very long arms and long legs from the Alpha Aquarius star system, right? Which their capital is called Zados Aquarius, which is 760 light years away, right? The capital is located in the Y of the jaw of uh, the Aquarian star system. They wear a human-sized mechanical suit, which is used for both protection and movement, also hiding their true identity. Much of their energy goes toward operating a mechanical human suit, right? When they come here, they use a mechanical human suit. But they also have an autopilot mode, making their life easier. To get the human suit to work, they have to download software programs to the brain. Too much information, the computer can't have a meltdown, resulting in and disclosing their true identity. Right? Right, and damaging the suit. They also apparently possess an extreme powerful weapons capable of destroying the planet, right? And they, cause they had the best warships on this side of the galaxy. And they are here to assist the blue aviators, right? In protecting the Stargate, keeping beings who are unwanted from getting in and protecting your ass from being invaded by off-wanted beings, okay? The little beings are some of the baddest beings being only four inches tall. They are some of the baddest beings in the galaxy. Right? Goes back to what Artoon Ray said, the smallest things carry the most power. Right? So these beings are protectors of the galaxy. And they're telling you that the galaxy is on Orion's neck, which is the capital. You also have another race of beings who are here 
on the on behalf of the Blue Avians and Black behalf of the Galactic Federation of Life to protect this particular solar system because this is very uh, particular thing going on here due to the crash that happened. A lot of beings have been uh, commissioned to come here and assist. Okay. So the Antorians from the Antroid star system in the Scorpio constellation, it is 619 light years away. Their home star is 400 times the size of your sun's solar system. And they have over 3,000 planets in their star system. The Antorians normally vibrate to the 6th and 7th density, but are able to take form in the 4th dimensions to be able to serve Earth and other uh, projects that they're working on. Many other Antorians choose to serve earth from the fourth dimension because they cannot tolerate the third dimensional frequencies they are telepathic right and make contacts with certain humans here on earth right the leaders of the Antorians are very tall about 10 to 12 10 to 12 feet tall they look kind of like big ass ants tall ants that walk upright right and we're gonna show you pictures of them right now right these beings are living on Uranians and assisting the Blue Uranians, right? Their skin appears copper in color, right? They have no hair, except the leaders have uh, a long horse-like braid going down the back, right? The little, the little Antorians are five and a half to six feet tall, right? They are very aggressive. They are, they are the wall uh, branch of these beings who are here on a sign, right? And these beings keep to themselves. They wear skin tight, dark uniforms, and carry advanced uh, weapons. They were assigned because they don't fuck around. Excuse my French. They would give you the business, right? And these are why these beings are here. They are just as bad as the, uh, the little Aquarius. Right? Their lifespan is in between 300 to 400 years old. And on their home world, they can live 12,000 years old. And males and females are equal on their planet. They all join the military and go through a 30 year basic training. So they tell you what they're about. They're about getting down, getting busy, counting the business. Which is why a new assign these people, right? They work like ant, like a, they work similar to an ant bed. So you want to understand how these beings work? Study the ant bed. Where the queen makes and produce babies, right? So these beings are here and they are assisting the blue avians and doing their thing and keeping everything going good. Also, the beings of the Avi the house of Avion, the royal house, whose leader is Tony the Tiger, which they put on front of a cereal box, right? Kellogg's, who is a member of the Illuminati, right? They know what's going down and they, they know his slogan is, they're great. That's Tony the Tiger slogan, who is the leader of the avian felines beings, who, who, whose capital is uh, in Leo, the Leo star system. And these beings are here in assisting the blue avian. You wanna know more about the cats? Go get Galactic uh, 11. We talk about them on Galactic 11, okay? And so they are here in assisting the beings uh, in the evolution process because they have family members here too. You see what I'm saying? Right, we want to introduce you to one more race, and then we're gonna get out of here, man. We're gonna, like we say, we've been, we're sorry for the wait. We're gonna drop more tapes here soon. We're gonna keep them rolling, baby. Right? Call the Garavans, who are a playful race. They are counterparts to the Aquarians and come from the same star system, right? A star located close to the Aquarian star, which is 760 light years away. These beings are frog like beings, ranging. With four inches to five inches tall. They are known for invading and not doing confrontation because they are not really good at fighting, but they are good at tricking people because they are so adorable, right? They are adorable little guys and they are like, they're not, a, not no threat. So people tend to take them in and they are very intelligent. They are very intelligent and they're not harmful. They're harmful as far as like doing physical damage to you but they can they will jack your shit <laughs> they will uh go into your stuff and mess with your stuff they're like little kids right like putting a little kid inside of a candy store these little guys and these little guys are the counterparts to the aquarians right and ash star command tried to work deals out with these beings but it was a waste of time right because these beings don't these beings here uh, get in with you then jack you you know what i'm saying they're about taking you know what i'm saying they ain't about fighting but they're about jacking you and stealing 
right? <laughs> these beans, guess how they get down, right? So just want to introduce you to some of these races, get you more races. We got another class coming soon, the ancient technology, right? Where we talk about how the ships work. We got another class coming called, you don't see nothing wrong with that, right? Part one. So these are the things we got going. And this is the young elder. This is Oso Ice, the young elder, signing out. And we're going to win this war. Why? Because we can dance and they can't.